also known as the Knitting Samurai. And this is a podcast called The Knitting Samurai and Her Guys, in which I, Steph, talk about what's going on in my knitting and share with you a little bit about my two sons and my husband. So um, this is episode 124, Save Me From the Plague. Can you guess what's been going on with us? Uh -huh. <laughs> um, the camera and I are arguing today. I've got a little window of time to record right here, so conditions are not perfect. I recognize that. But... I got a little head cold going on too, so I don't sound quite normal either. But if I don't sit down and record this right now, it's not gonna happen. So we're making it work. We're just gonna make it work. So first up, um, well, before I even start showing you any projects, it's spring, right? It's the end of April. And what happens in spring? We all get that itch, that I wanna cast on all of the things itch. And so after having three weeks, three podcast episodes in a row where I basically showed you the same, three items, two or three items, I had to cast on a bunch of new. So um, forgive me for a parade of new projects, but that's where my head's been this week. So I'll talk about the other stuff, but I'm probably not gonna show it. So first one of the new things that I cast on this week is the Easy Shawl by Martina Bem. Um, back in January, I bought this cake of frolicking feet there are buttons in there making lots of noise. I guess I'll show you this side. Done roving, frolicking feet. It's a transition yarn. And when I bought, I bought it specifically for this shawl. <clears throat> um, and I finally said, okay, that's it. Take it out, cast it on. So this is the apple picking colorway. And I haven't made a whole lot of progress on it, but I got it on the needles, which is what I, I wanted to do. I haven't had it on the needles, so I couldn't be working on it. So just the start of it. Um, easy mindless project you know one of those um, I couldn't do it right now because I think I cast this on the day after I recorded last but <coughs> excuse me I'll try to keep that to a minimum um, but yeah you read it through once and then it's in your head of what you're supposed to do and it's knitting up the yarn has some great variegation in it not sure how much of it you can see um, and I'm not so wild about the yellow it's the center color the next color is a teal yellow purple orange variegated so I'm, I'm anxious to get to that section and then that that lime green is really what what I bought it for so I'm using US 3's 3.25 millimeter needles and yeah that's on the needles and it's going <laughs> um, I have so much I want to talk to you about like my mind is racing around and yeah okay so this this knitting but I've been watching Outlander <laughs> So yeah, all of you ladies out there that have been reading the books for years, including my mother-in-law, and loving them, I just couldn't get into the idea of it happens in the past and when it happens in the past even further, like, it just didn't speak to me. And um, our HBO app, I mean our, our, whatever, it's been coming up as something I would like. And so I, I checked it out. The first episode I wasn't into, I said, okay, I'll give it two, one more. Second one, they got me. I'm hooked. I'm hooked. So. I, um, I've been loving watching it. I think I'm four episodes in and there were, what, 10 or 11? So I've been enjoying that. And working on these new socks. <laughs> so, you know, you finish a pair, you have to cast on another. There, jump back for a second. Tristan's Barn Raising Quilt Blanket. So you'll remember that's the smaller one that I'm knitting that I was trying to use full skeins of yarn. This chair is at a really weird height. Um, I was trying to use full skeins of yarn rather than making it be scrappy, making it be more intention, intentionally selected colors. Um, so to that end, I cast on squares from five different skeins, but then did, ruled out those skeins as part of his blanket. So I have five skeins of yarn, five knit up squares that I want to include in my scrap one, so I need to knit projects with the rest of those skeins. So one of those skeins is this opal yarn, um, I can't say the word. My brother-in-law is coming this week, and I was going to ask him before we I recorded, because he speaks German pretty fluently, but I forgot. So you'll have to deal with me butchering it. It is Opal Schaffpot. I don't know. In color 8127. And I've been making mad crazy progress on this, because look, you haven't even seen these, and I've got two little feet going right there. Mm hmm so I really love these colors. It's like a, uh, if you think of a washed out rust 
and it's spruce green and um, sort of a brick orange color but then like picture those colors in your head and then bleach them down a little bit that's how this looks so I really am loving how they're knitting up I'm using my favorite Wendy Johnson um, slip stitch heel basic sock pattern with my 2x2 two two rib on top of that and that's how the rib is turning out on that and I'm using US 2's nope US 0's two millimeter needles and I'm almost up to starting heel increases. I know they are flying along. We had one of my coworkers is leaving. She's going to work at Lego. I can't believe it. So we actually took Friday afternoon and went to a local Mexican restaurant bar place. And I, I sat there and knit for like three hours while we all reminisced and said, said our goodbyes. So, but I think Lego would be a pretty amazing place to work. So I hope her, I wish her all the best. So there's that. Um, <laughs> so you know, spring, babies, babies, and the baby bucket of projects all knit up is completely depleted. So wanting to do some more quick knits and restocking my baby bucket because that's low. And um, I think that sweater just had an effect on me. Working on the 2010 cardigan has just, it's a long slog. And so I wanted some quick, instant gratification. So here they are, two of the swirl hats. This is by Mandy Harrington. And the first one, it was knit with Claudia Hampate's fingering, which side note, used to be my most favorite yarn for probably the first three or four years I was knitting. Like I buy and covet the stuff. So I have quite a bit of it in the stash. And I, I it's a nice um, densely plied yarn. Really like it, always have, always will. But I don't buy it anymore. For some reason I just I don't know I don't so there's that one um, and this is the Plumalicious colorway and the second one is this is another one of those skeins that's been rolled out from Tristan's blanket so I need to knit the yarn so this one is white birch fiber arts in her 8020 merino nylon self-striping yarn <laughs> and the colorway is tan rusted and ready I absolutely love this colorway it's gorgeous it's gorgeous. So two cute little hats. I'll probably knit two more just to, you know, work through it, get them going. These were knit on um, US 2's 2.75 millimeter needles and three 3.25 millimeters. Um, patterns free over on Rav. It's quick. I think it makes a beautiful shower gift. I love the way the self-striping looks with the swirls. Personally, I think it looks very interesting. So. There's that, they haven't been blocked yet, and I can see that this guy could benefit from some blocking here in these yarn overs. Some of them look a little messy, but, um, okay. Yeah, so that's on and sort of off, but more to come on the needles And then on that. the fourth one, I was knitting like the wind yesterday to try and get this finished, and I did. Again, needs blocking, but the newborn vertebrae, and this is by Kelly Brooker. And I used some Knit Picks Felici. I'm showing you the back because that's the interesting part of this pattern. Um, Knit Picks Felici in the goth colorway. I know it's discontinued, but I've knit quite a bit of the Felici for socks. And I think I have, I want to say, six or seven skeins in the stash stored up. And I don't like it for socks. I'm pretty sure that's why it was discontinued. The yarn is just so soft and or short fiber length. I'm not sure, but... The pairs I have in it, I've, they don't, I haven't gotten a lot of wear out of them before they've um, started pilling. And I'm thinking of my Joe's Boy socks in particular, which I think were like Twinkleberry was a pattern. Um, they're a purple and blue stripe. They're beautiful socks, but they pilled really fast. And I think those were knit on a one at a looser gauge for me. So perhaps the loose gauge is what's call it, causing the pilling. But even in the few days that it took me to knit this up like I can see that it's already got a little bit of a halo going so um, uh, still I mean I, I don't take that as a slam on the yarn because it's super soft lovely to knit with and I think for the amount of time that a newborn baby sweater gets worn it'll be fine you know the baby will probably wear it four or five times and will have outgrown it so this is um, one of Tristan's teachers is pregnant and so I wanted to knit her a little something so I didn't like the idea of having striping rib around the collar and because of this distance 
it's so many stitches that I thought I'd be better off using um, some solid, a solid color yarn. So I found some Dreaming Color Smushy in my stash that was similar. I found all the red fingering white yarn I had in my stash and then wound the skein against a section of the red to see what was closest. So that one looked the closest to me. So I used that there on the cuffs and at the bottom hem just to keep it all consistent. Um, I don't know if it's coming off of working with the Knit Pick, the Felici Super Soft um, Merino yarn, but the Smooshy was very, it felt very crunchy to my hand, like to the point where I'm a little nervous about that being against a baby's neck. I'm hoping some wool wash will help soften it up. And it's funny because on the label, it says 100% super fine Australian Merino on the Smooshy and it doesn't feel super fine to me. So I don't know if maybe the nylon content and the Felici makes it seem softer or what, but um, all in all, it's a good project and I'm happy with the completed item. It makes me hesitant, like I wouldn't want to knit that, um, the smooshy into a shawl. Like it would just be too scratchy, I think. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with the rest of that skein. I use less than a 10th of the skein just to do the ribbing, so. I have a couple skeins of it in my stash too, so. And I've never knit with it before, that's the other thing. So the, I, I'm gonna hope that I bought it before I made my rule of, ooh, there's a piece of fuzz floating. My rule of, you know, no matter how wonderful a yarn is, you only buy one skein until you knit with it. You can't stash it until you've knit with it. Because, you know, something can look beautiful, but the actual, like the way it feels on your hands or the finished item, may not be great so better to try it test it and then say oh yeah I do love this in stock so uh, they my newborn vertebrae so I've knit one I know they were all the rage this winter um, I don't think I'll knit anymore it was a perfectly well written pattern but it's just not my cup of tea so and that was also on us twos and threes and yeah I think that's it on that one um, now to something that you've seen before. So Tristan's dinner napkins. I did finish one more, so I'll share it with you. It's very exciting. I know, I know, a teal square. So this is grandma's dishcloth pattern using Lily sugars and cream ombres. And then here's the one that's currently in progress. Love that color. So yeah, I, so this is the fourth one. I have a bit more to knit of those, so. I need to kind of focus myself over here and finish these up and get them off the needles because, you know, he needs them. Um, barn Raising Quilt Square. So this is the Barn Raising Quilt by Shelly Mackey and Larissa Brown. And it's knit on, oh, oh no, US size twos. How am I gonna do this? How did I do this? What if I just force it quick? Um, U.S. size twos, <laughs> and I've ended up with Opal Rainforest as that favorite, as my favorite yarn in it, or the color that it's basically, the blanket is based around, and that's this one. And then we have this skein of, I have it noted as Fiber Nymph Bounce Base. So there's this in it. I think it's Happy Feet though. I think I have some of both in there. And then I received my dipping sauce from Lady Men Fiber Art. Not sure if I showed that to you, but I have finished a skein, a square. I haven't finished a skein, but there's one of the skeins, one of the squares of that. So nice, cheery, honey mustard color that's nice and variegated. So I really like how that one turned out. I don't have any. No, I have nothing to show it to to you except like a, to show how it looks next to it. But I have this one on the needles and then I always have two in my bag. So then there's the start of the next one. So those are going along. <laughs> I know, kind of anticlimactic to share with you those, but I'm happy to have the colors situated and I can get back to working on that. So, um, and finish it just in time for summer. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Oh, my poor baby. All right, so let's talk about Mission 2015 updates. Um, 
12 pairs of socks. So I'm just a little behind here. I have finished three pairs. And the latest one was the Jupiter Ascending socks. So you saw those last week, the purple pair. Um, three years to build a barn raising quilt for mommy, not for Tristan. So this is the scrap one for me that's mainly self-striping yarn. Oh my goodness, drop and stitch markers, split and stitches. Can I really multitask the way I think I can? Um, I have eight completed squares. The goal was to do 16 to 22. So, and as soon as I use those five skeins of rejected Tristan barn raising quilt yarn, yarns, I'll add them into this total over here and they'll go into my big blanket. So, um, but, but, but for now I'm at eight, uh, two sweaters for me. That's been done for a while. So check finished. Ryan Beck Thanksgiving Christmas sweaters for the boys. I haven't even thought about it yet and we're getting close, but you know, who doesn't like to procrastinate and get down to the wire? <laughs> um, <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> End with less in 2014. So I have to tell you that the end of last month, I bought quite a bit of yarn. I know, I, I don't even remember why. Maybe it was the sweater's worth for the 2010 cardigan. Maybe it was for the barn raising quilt, I don't know. But I actually um, added three miles of yarn to the stash, which was not my intention. And so I need to get back down to 164 miles at the end of the year. And right now I'm at 170.7 so bring on stash dash right so that would really help me bang out some yardage to finish off some projects um whips less than 29 at the end of the year i did frog some things and i finished some things but then i cast on a bunch of things <laughs> so last month i had um seven active and 23 hibernating and this month i have the same so flat to last month but still holding, oh no, I don't quite understand my notes. I have six active, I don't have seven active. So I'm at 29, which is where I was. And I wanted to get to 15. So maybe, who knows? <sighs> you know how it is when something is, seems very important in one scene, one setting of your life or at one particular point, such as setting all these missions in January. And then at another point, you're like, mm, insignificant, I don't care. <laughs> That's kind of how I feel right now. So hopefully next month, I'll be a little more engaged with my with my missions and my goals and um, be working towards them <laughs> more vigorously. Oh, what else have I been watching? I have been um, working my way through the season one of Homeland. I don't think I had started it when last we spoke, but I have seriously been enjoying that. I always love, I call him Charlie Cruz because that was the first thing I saw him in. Uh, D Daniel Lewis, I think is his name. Anyways, I enjoy pretty much everything he's in. Um, so that's been, that's been keeping me distracted as has Game of Thrones season four. I know. I know. Last year at about this time, I walked away from the show because I just couldn't handle the um, torture theme that the show had taken that was not in the books. Like that was, if the books had been written that way, I or had expressed it so explicitly, I probably could have handled the show going that way, but I didn't see torture as entertainment. I just didn't. So we stopped watching it. Um, and this... All the commercials for the new season of Game of Thrones season five have really, I mean, I've read three or four of the books. I was really invested in these characters. And so I kind of want to see where it goes. Like I don't want to finish reading the books because it's a huge time commitment, but um, at least I want to see the show. So um, we pick back up where we left off and with the caveat that whenever there's torture on, we just mute it and I leave the room. So. That's worked out well for us. We finished season four and we're about to start season five and catch up with the rest of the world. So Steve and I are both excited about that. We both enjoy that show. So what's new? A uh, couple new things to share with you. I have done some Etsy shopping. You may have noticed while I was sitting here talking my necklace. So it is two rings and I'm not gonna take it off and you're probably not gonna be able to see it too well, but it is um, from O Necklace is a seller on Ravelry and there are two rings and one says Tristan and one says Roland and I just I don't know 
how I found it, but I was feeling a need for a new necklace. I've worn the same, just like your everyday basic necklace. Um, I got it, Steve got it for me for our first anniversary. The little ring with a diamond in it. And um, I just wanted something new. I mean, we've been married for a lot of years. Let me think for a second. Oh, six, so eight years. So I deserved a new necklace and I wanted a little piece of my boys with me because I have Steve on my hand and I wear my bracelets, which is about my boys too, but I don't know, I just want it. So, um, oh necklace. They have lots of choices, lots of different metals you can select and um, all kinds of personalization available. Shipping was fast, really good quality. I'm very happy with it. I've had it for about a week. So just thought I'd share that with you. And then I also bought a new project bag. So this is, I haven't found anything to put in it yet, but this is Dandelion Love by Jane B. Smiley. So I've heard the name before. There's a ribbon on the side. Oh, it says it on this side, Jane B. Smiley. Um, but I've never purchased from her before. This is a seriously hefty bag. So it's, it's muslin or... I, I don't know. I'm not going to pretend to know. It's some kind of very dense weave. I love the Danny lines. It's very pretty. Nice and deep. I can definitely see it for socks. I'm looking around. What can I put in it? Can I put in it? Maybe I'll put my shawl in it. Maybe that's a good choice. Yeah, I think I will. I'm going to move in right now as we speak. I know. I should have taken the yarn out of this container, but the novelty of it appeals to me. So I'm still using it. There we go. Is that all that was in here? Yep. All right, I've moved in. So it's a good size bag. All this at the top is empty after I put that project in it. So that's new. I'll recommend that as well. The swap, the swap, the swap, the swap. You've got two days left. Go sign up. Quick, quick, quick. <laughs> um, I'm excited. Sorry. So if you missed, so the swap, we are doing mini skeins slash um, a barn raising quilt and mini skein swap over to the group there's a thread sign up between now and Friday and um, we'll try and get the projects or not the projects but the swap packages out did I write it down anywhere I think it's by the end of May May 30th so if that's something you are interested in if you knit with the yarn already and want to share it send it off into some other capable hands so it gets put into another blanket um, scrappy project go sign up I'm excited, can't wait to do it and see what I get. And that, I think, was the last order of business. Tristan is a walking machine. He is a walking machine. Let me show you this. Okay, let's get him to walk this way. Come on, Tristan, Ro step aside, please. Roland, can you move? Thank you. Here he comes. Yeah? Yeah! Look at you, you're going to walk from the... I hope you like Steve singing. I know I sent it to I sent that video to um, the grandmothers and his own mother didn't notice and I had to point it out to her like did you hear your son's vocals in the background? <laughs> so yeah Tristan is just I mean walking the length of the living room he'll just stand there and look around he's so funny and most of the time he does this while he's walking. <laughs> I don't know how this helps you balance but apparently it does. Um, yeah and then I alluded to it, we've been so sick. And by we, I mean the boys, uh, the, some sort of stomach bug slash turned into a cold slash turned into double ear infections for both of them. <sighs> oh my goodness. Let me just say, I've done a lot of laundry these last nine days <laughs> because somebody's tossing something at some point every single day or night. But knock on wood, we're near the end. Tristan's still home today. He was sick yesterday. So far it's noon and he, he's still good. So maybe we'll make it through today and be on the other side of it. The um, antibiotics were not helping him at all. I mean, they helped his ears, but they weren't helping his poor little tummy. So we've eased up on those and he's doing okay. So, <sighs> and amidst all that, I got a cold. I got like the cold part of it. So I'm like, am I gonna get double ear infections? Like, how does that work that they both got double ear infections? Ear infections aren't contagious. I know this. <laughs> so, yeah, 
I think that's it. I think that's all I have to share with you. I know that, yeah, that's it. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna stop because it's worked this far. So let's just call it a good, a good episode and I'll see you in about 10 days or so feeling better with who knows what to show you for projects. So <laughs> take care, bye.